It's an extraordinary thing to think that a group of Westerners was able to learn from a South Indian artist of such high stature and talent as Bala Saraswati. We had such a wide range of backgrounds and training and ability, and she hung in there with us for years, teaching us so conscientiously and rigorously giving of herself and her great art. There's this beautiful mixture of love and gratitude and disappointment and awe and reverence all mixed together when I recall my years with her. I first learned about Bala my junior year in college in 1967 at the University of Wisconsin in Madison at an Asian theater course taught by A.C. Scott. One day, he showed us the Wesleyan film of Bala dancing Krishnani Begani Bharo. Of course, I didn't really know what I was seeing, but I knew it was important. Her movements, her changes, her shapes, her facial expressions, her gestures, her fluidity, it all stayed in my mind. Three years later, in 1972, I was living in San Francisco going to graduate school. Vishwa and Ranga came to the city to perform. Nine months later or so, I found myself studying Bharatanatyam in Seattle with Bala, Lakshmi, Ramya, Vishwa, and Ranga thanks to the American Society for Eastern Arts summer program at the university there. Thanks to the patronage of the Scripps and ASEA, Bala came to the States many times between the early 1960s and the early 1980s to teach and perform, often at university settings, often in the summers. In 1973, it was in Seattle at the University of Minnesota, University of Washington. It was a 10-week program. We 12 or so beginners studied Adavu's three hours a day, five days a week, alternating having Ramya or Bala and Lakshmi as instructors. Our floor was concrete per Bala's request. I was in the front row, and I remember Lakshmi exhorting, stamp, stamp, harder, force. Well, my sit was poor, and my execution was poor, and within a week or so, I had badly injured my right foot. The doctor said the only way I could keep dancing was to wear tennis shoes while I danced for six weeks. Oh, no. I bought a pair of pure white tennies, and my heart in my throat, I went up to Bala at the start of class. I had lived in India by then, and I thought I understood what an outrageous request I might be making. But I told her what the doctor had said, and I asked if I might dance in the class in tennis shoes. She gave me a look that is indescribable. And then she said with a wave of her hand, but go to the back of the room. In 1974, the summer following my tennis shoes summer, the program was located at the new Center for World Music in Berkeley, California, where I lived. They taught the people who lived here a swarajati, Gopala Lola, an exquisite Abhinaya piece in Danyasi Raga by Pon Ponaya Pillai. Bala crafted it so perfectly, both the Jatis and the Abhinaya. It is just a jewel. 
and it works very, very well with young American audiences. The music is captivating, the melody. The jatis follow the rhythm of the song, so they're easy to watch. And the abhinaya tells stories of Krishna. In our classes, we started with adavus and did them for many, many classes for weeks. First the feet, then adding the arms. We did perform Alarapu and Jatiswaram at the end of a 10-week session, but we were not under the illusion that we really knew how to dance them. Bala told us once, I recall, that she thought it would take a minimum of five years of steady hard work to become a basic Bharatanatyam dancer and 10 years to become a good Bharatanatyam dancer. She was appalled by the teachers at that time, this was in the 1970s, who were readying girls for an Ardhat Gecham in uh, six months or a year. One admonition in my notes from early on says, it's a quote from her, if you want to learn from me, you cannot curl your fingers. Here are some words that appear with frequency in my notes over those 10 years. Precise, full, completely, open, accent, low, don't cheat, extend, lift, look at hands, feet must make clear sound, Bala always had Lakshmi at her side during group classes. Lakshmi did a marvelous job of translating both the lyrics of the dance items and sometimes Balama's comments. Sometimes we had Tamil vocabulary sessions where they would give us Tamil words along with the appropriate Abhinaya mudras. Looking back, I wonder where her teaching might have led if we'd had more classes with her, more years. We were such inferior vessels, you know, and yet we were dedicated and sincere and hard workers. And we had had just the very best teachers, masters of the art form to teach us. A whole family of them. In the fall of 1977, I and another student, Peggy Day, arrived in Madras. On the first day, Bala asked me to show her Adavuz. To my relief, I heard her tell Lakshmi, fundamentals nullid. <laughs> Initially, she had Lakshmi and me take class together. Nrit, not Abhinaya. But then I became quite ill and had to stop dancing for a bit. When I had recovered, we did not return to that pattern. In fact, Bala seemed angry that I had been ill. She stopped speaking to me for a few days. Lakshmi shared with me that sometimes Bala would stop speaking to her for a week. I think maybe Bala's own constant ill health and her struggles with it made it difficult for her to tolerate anyone else's. Perhaps as a way of compensation, she later gave me an additional padam for my margam, yen palli kondiraya. One of my early memories of her concerts was watching her dance the part of Nandan in Vari Marai Tirukudu. She is dancing the untouchable Nandan, asking Nandi, the bull, if he will move just a foot, just a little, so that she might see her Lord Shiva from outside the temple gate. At the very end of the song, I remember watching her standing there, 
giving in, giving up, surrendering, looking up, knowing the view is blocked, and then watching her face as she saw the bull move. Her footwork made her like the rolling ocean, you know? Her feet so relaxed, sounding on the stage, drumming their own song as she would roll, move across the stage in this rhythm. And all the while, from the waist up, her hands and face, arms and gestures in this intricate, syncopated, clever, feelingful Abinaya. It was just mesmerizing. I could have watched all day the grace, where the movement came from. It was mysterious. Her hands, arms, and always underneath those feet. 1980 was also the summer that Balama taught us Netrandi Neratile, a param. One of my most powerful memories of her was of her teaching the line, the phrase really, Varumaya Sami. Varumaya, please come, Lord, please come. She had been seated. Lakshmi tried to get her to stay seated as much as possible to conserve her energy. But for this, to teach this, she stood up. She reached forward, forward, and then down with both arms, leaning into it with her whole body. And she looked. Because I was standing right there in front of her, she looked right at me. She looked right at me and sang to me, Varu Maya. And I experienced it. I experienced her dancing to God, seeing God, seeing God right through me. I was there, but I wasn't there. She was seeing me, but not seeing me. She was calling and inviting, oh my goodness, it, calling in God. And I got to be the, the being that was experiencing it. It was unforgettable. 